Today we're going to be talking about how to start the curly girl method and more specifically how to start the curly girl method if you're living in India. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then keep watching. All right, so first off, what is the curly girl method? The curly girl method is a set of rules or a methodology put together by Lorraine Massey in order to take care of curly hair. Who can follow the curly girl method? If your hair is textured in any way, which means that if you have wavy hair, you can follow the curly girl method. If you have curly hair, if you have kinky hair, if you have coily hair, you could follow the curly girl method. The point is that if your hair is not poker straight, then the curly girl method could be for you. According to CGM, which is short for the curly girl method, we're not supposed to be using sulfates. Why? Because sulfates are cleansing agents and they're very drying on the hair. And it's important to note that curly hair is dry to start with. And so you don't want to use anything that is excessively drying out your hair. Secondly, we're not supposed to be using silicones. Why? Because silicones will coat the hair and prevent moisture loss. However, this is an artificial way of keeping in the moisture. Instead of using silicones, we use oils and butters to preserve, lock and seal the hair and protect it from moisture loss. You also don't use parabens and parabens are basically preservatives. Essentially, the route that you're taking with your hair is a natural route. So we're boycotting harsh chemicals in general and so parabens fall under those. Lastly, we don't use alcohol. Why? Because alcohol will dry out the hair. Now it's important to note that there are fatty alcohols and there are drying alcohols. Fatty alcohols, long chain alcohols, these are fine to use. However, we don't use drying alcohols because curly hair is dry to begin with. So we don't want anything drying out our hair further. All right, so your next question might be what shampoo to use, what conditioner to use. Let's start with shampoo. If you look at my Amazon storefront, if you go under shampoos, you'll find a whole list that is available in India that you can use if you're following CGM. The first thing that you're gonna do is use a CG friendly shampoo. Let me tell you how these differ from the other traditional shampoos that you've already used. Your shampoos have sulfates and sulfates are lathering and cleansing agents, so they lather quite a bit. However, when you start CGM, you'll notice that your shampoo does not have a sulfate but it does have a surfactant. As compared to your old shampoo, it is not going to lather as much. If you're watching a lot of CG videos, I'm sure you've heard the word low poo. And essentially what that means is that the shampoo is not going to lather as much. And you knowing this and being ready for this is very important. It takes a bit of getting used to because you're used to that lathering feeling. However, I don't want you guys to get super overwhelmed and be ready for the fact that your first CG wash, you're not going to be super happy because you're going to feel like my hair is really dirty and I don't feel like I cleaned it enough. Let me just tell you that you have definitely adequately cleaned your hair. It's going to take you some time to get used to that feeling. Another thing. When you start CGM, you'll notice that your hair will feel very, very heavy in comparison to what it felt like before. It takes some time for your scalp to reset and get used to this new regime. All right, so let me put it this way. Imagine that all this while you've been using clean and clear face wash and then you decide to switch to Cetaphil face wash. It's exactly the same thing. You feel like you're not seeing your shampoo lather as much and so you're feeling like, okay, this is not cleansing my hair. I would ask you to give it some time because I promise you're going to get used to that feeling. So if you've already started, then I just want to tell you that it gets better. Stick with it. And if you haven't, then it's so important for you to prepare yourself for this because trust me, your first wash is not going to go very great and you are going to feel like, okay, this is not happening. This is not working for me, but stick with it. I promise it gets better. To start with, if I can give you one recommendation, I would suggest the Northwish Natural Shampoo because it's lathering. It's more lathering than the other shampoos that I've tried. This one will help you ease into CG and also it is super cleansing but it's also moisturizing so i feel like that shampoo is a good shampoo to start with if you're just starting cgm now 
How often should you shampoo? I know you're watching videos and you're looking at girls washing their hair once a week and you're freaked out because you probably wash your hair every single day. My advice to you would be to ease into it, which means that if you wash your hair every single day, start with washing it once in three days and then slowly, slowly, slowly have a number in mind. So if your number is like once in seven days, start off washing once in three days and then slowly, slowly, slowly build it up to seven. So what you're gonna do is, shampoo and in between if you feel like I can't take it anymore then you can co-wash. Now if you've watched other content from other creators who live in other countries you will see the word co-wash exclusively being used because some of them do not shampoo their hair at all. They use a co-wash on every single wash day. If you're living in India I don't think this will be prudent at all because our climate is not ideally suited to co-washing. There's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of dust here, there's a lot of pollution here. And so co-washing exclusively doesn't exactly work for the Indian climate. If you want to co-wash, then you can co-wash in between your shampooing days. But exclusively co-washing, that is something that I cannot recommend if you live in India. The next thing is conditioner. So if you're taking up CG, then it is not advised to comb your hair when it's dry. And so the recommendation is to detangle in the shower. For these purposes, when you're using a conditioner, pretty much the most important thing that you're looking for is slip, which means how slippery a product is. This is gonna help you detangle with ease. It's gonna make detangling so much easier. This is not a product recommendation video. However, if you're starting out, I promise you slip is so important and it's either going to make or break your CG experience. So I would say go with the Requil Murumuru conditioner because it has really nice slip and it's going to make detangling much easier. If you have long hair, I would recommend using the EXO Curl Comb. This is also going to make detangling much easier. It's going to reduce breakage. That comb is my all-time favorite. I talk about it continually. So now, when you're detangling, it's very important for you to detangle with patience and go easy. So essentially, during the week, there is no combing. And I know this is a tough one. I know it sounds so scary and so intimidating, but you get used to it. I promise you do. It's also important to understand why you're not supposed to comb your hair. When you start CG and you style your hair, you'll notice that your hair will form curl clumps. These are some of my curl clumps. Now, if I comb through this, then I'm just going to destroy this. This is going to come apart and I'm going to lose all of my definition. And so they say don't comb your curls because once the curl clump is broken, then my hair is going to look like a frizzy mess. I'll insert a picture of what my hair looks like when it's not defined like this for you to understand the difference. If you comb your hair, then your hair is just going to be one ball of frizz and you're going to lose all of that definition. Which is why you're told not to comb your hair during the week and only comb it when it's wet, in the shower, when you have to detangle. Now you might be asking, if I don't comb my hair during the week, then isn't it going to be super knotted up and tangled up in the first place, making detangling super difficult? For this question, I would say have a look at my detangling tips video because it's going to make you understand things a little better. Now, when you're conditioning, it is very important for you to squish to condish. What is this going to do? If you've started CG, there is a possibility that you're not happy with your hair and you feel like you need to do right by it. And that is my first hint to believe that maybe you weren't as generous and as kind to your hair as you're deciding to be now. Which means that maybe you have color damage, maybe you have heat damage. So essentially, what you need to do to get your curls to look really beautiful and to get your curls to behave is curl training. Squish to condition. This step is so important for curl training, especially for wavy hair, because wavy hair doesn't know what to do when it's undefined. And essentially, any step that you take that helps your hair behave in a particular way is called curl training. And so it is super, super, super important. All right, so we've spoken about shampoo and conditioner, but we haven't spoken about pre-poing. Pre-poing is basically anything that you put on your hair before you wash it. And the most common thing that people pre-poo with would be oils. However, I would say if you're a beginner, if you're just starting CG, then don't pre-poo just yet because 
If you put oil in your hair and then you go to wash it with a CG friendly shampoo, you're not going to be able to get that oil out of your hair and this is going to make you get frustrated. This is going to make you feel like, okay, CG is not for me. In the beginning, keep your routine super simple. Do not pre-poo just yet. Once you start CG and you're used to that feeling of your hair being on the curly curl method, that is when you should add a few additional steps to your routine like pre-pooing. The next step that we can talk about is deep conditioning and deep conditioning is basically just using a mask or using your regular conditioner, putting it on your hair and leaving it on for an extended period of time. You're giving your hair time to soak in that product and not just conditioning and washing it off. Okay, so if you're a beginner, I would say don't start deep conditioning just yet because CGM is very tedious, it is time consuming and very honestly, it is a lot, right? Because I'm sure you haven't put so much attention into your hair. Trust me, now that you're starting, you'll realize how time consuming it is. However, high risk, high reward, right? Well, essentially it's not risk, it's high effort, high reward. The more you do, the more you get. The more you sow, the more you reap. Essentially, it's this. The more time you put into your routine, the more you will get out of it. However, it is going to take you some time to fall in love with your hair. And that is when you'll be prompted to try a little harder, to do a little more. And so, when you're starting, I would say, keep your routine super simple. Shampoo your hair, condition your hair, and then straight away, style, and you're done. Slowly, slowly, when you've gotten into CGM and you're feeling good about it, that is when you can add some more steps to your routine and then you'll notice that you don't really mind because it's paying off, because you can see the results, because your hair is getting better. And so that is going to motivate you and push you to do better and work harder. If you're starting, you don't want anything that is super excessive, that demotivates you and makes you feel like, hey, look, this is too much, uh, I can't do this. And so I would say, keep it simple. All right, so let's talk about styling. About styling, I have the same advice. When you're starting out, just rake and scrunch. I have a video on raking and scrunching. I'll leave it down in the description. It's like a five minute styling routine. You just rake the product through your hair and you just scrunch it and you're done. When you're starting CGM, I promise, if you go into an elaborate styling routine, then you'll be like, hey, whoa, I don't want to spend half an hour taking care of my hair. This is too much. Finger coiling, finger rolls, denmit brush routines, uh, comb styling routines, upside down routines. All of these routines are super tedious. It'll give you some back ache, a neck ache, arm ache, stuff like that. So I would say in the beginning, keep it super duper simple. You want to get in and get out as fast as possible. And slowly when you see results, that is when you can build on your existing routine. It will give you a very nice baseline against which you can compare your other results and see what your hair likes better. So since we're talking about styling, let's talk about the two things that you need for styling. Number one, leave-in conditioner. The second is gel. Now, when you're picking a leave-in conditioner, now this is a very, very important product in your routine. How nice your hair looks, how moisturized your hair looks, and how long your hair is able to retain that moisture and look great. All of these factors are dependent on the leave-in conditioner that you're using. So, picking a leave-in conditioner is going to be a little tricky in the beginning. Now, maybe there's a chance that you'll get lucky and you'll pick the right one for your hair from the on-start. And that's fabulous. There could also be a chance that you've bought a leave-in conditioner and it doesn't work for you. My next upload is going to be a video on how to pick a leave-in conditioner and I'll leave it down below. When you're starting, just start. And then after that, you'll notice that no matter what product you've started with, it is going to give you a really nice baseline and you can compare your future results to that baseline and then understand what worked for you better. My advice would be to use the lightest leave-in conditioner that you can find because if it doesn't work for you, then you can always use the log method and it is going to enhance your results. However, if you pick a leave-in conditioner that is too heavy for you, you can use a little less of it, but you'll notice that your hair feels really greasy. And essentially when you're starting, I would advise you not to use super heavy products because anyway, your hair is gonna feel very, very heavy. So we want to minimize that heavy feeling. We want to keep you away from anything that weighs your hair down. 
pick the lightest leave-in conditioner that you can find i have reviews on every single leave-in conditioner available in the indian market you can check it out i have an entire playlist on curly hair products and i stress a lot on leave-in conditioners so you can check out that playlist once you're done with this video my advice to you would be this pick a leave-in conditioner that is a level two and then if it doesn't work for you watch my log video you'll just have to spend like two three hundred rupees more to buy an oil and so the money doesn't really go to waste because it's easier for you to use something that is lighter than what your hair needs rather than using something that is too heavy for your hair because essentially in the beginning without you understanding porosity without you understanding your true hair texture we want to stay away from heavy products and we want to keep things very very light which is exactly why in this video which is like my beginner routine video i use the lightest leave-in conditioner available in the indian market because i made that video for beginners and i knew that if beginners are watching the video and are tempted to buy these products then these products would suit you regardless of your curl type and regardless of your hair porosity essentially my recommendation would be check out this video look at the leave-in conditioner that i'm using look at the conditioner that i'm using and these would suit your hair regardless of what your hair is like later on if you feel like no this is too light for me and i need some more moisturization then i have a video on log that you can check out and you can use this technique if you want a little more moisturization and you feel like your current leave-in conditioner is not really hitting the spot for you and you need a little bit more moisturization wise now lastly let's talk about gel i know you're freaking out about gel and you're like hey isn't gel super damaging why am i using gel on my hair isn't it going to destroy my hair i've heard that gel is really bad for you it causes your hair to fall out etc 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 these are myths because essentially you're going to be using a cg friendly gel a cg friendly gel does not have any ingredients that are going to harm your hair what a gel does is it causes a cast on your hair but I know you're super scared of gel and so I'm going to point you in the direction of this video. This video is my leave-in and mousse video. If you're just starting, I would say start with the mousse, forget about the gel for now. Why am I saying this to you? Because I know that the idea of using mousse is a little less intimidating compared to gel. And so start with a leave-in conditioner and then top it up with a mousse. Forget about the gel for now. Later on when you feel a little more confident and you've consumed enough content and you feel sufficiently satisfied that you can take the plunge, that is when you can introduce the gel into your routine and you'll notice that your results will be so much better. So basically again I'm coming back to this point about establishing a good baseline and then slowly slowly move up from there. And once you use a gel, you'll notice that it'll be a significant improvement over the mousse. However, in the beginning, start with the mousse, later on, build up to a gel. Okay, so now, when you're starting CGM, your hair does not know how to curl. So essentially, what you're going to try to do is curl train it. There are so many methods of curl training. In the beginning, keep things super simple. The only curl training that you need to start with would be number one squish to condition, number two is your two strand twist and number three is plopping. Once you're comfortable with these three, then only experiment with things that are a little more time consuming. Alright, the big chop. Is it important for you to go for the big chop, which means to cut off a significant chunk or length of your hair in order to start CGM? Look. My advice on this would be that it takes a particular length of hair for your curl to form, for your wave to form because your curls could be this small, they could be longer if you have waves. Essentially what I'm trying to say is the size of each curl or each twist or each wave could be different. So if you have smaller curls, so let's say you have type 3 curls, then this length is perfectly fine for you to see significant curls in your hair. If you have looser waves, so let's say you have a 2A pattern, for you to appreciate and enjoy your hair, you need a significant amount of length for that wave to form properly. Because essentially when you're looking at like, you know, your hair waving at least 3-4 times, it looks beautiful. 
and so in the beginning it does not matter if you have a lot of damage i also started with like most of my hair being super damaged however i would say in the beginning there's no need to cut off all the damage even if you don't want to trim your hair it's fine just start off wait for a few months to pass so maybe after 3 months that is when you can decide to cut your hair so let's say that all of this is perfectly good hair and then from here all of it is damaged start cgm see how your hair is looking see how your hair is forming the waves and then later on decide how much you want to cut and essentially if you only want to cut 1 inch of your hair that is totally fine i promise you in the beginning there is no need for you to chop off like 10 inches of hair for no reason especially because you're going to miss that length and it's going to upset you and also shorter hair is a little more tedious and difficult to style so i would say keep it long for now in 2 or 3 months assess the situation and then go from there now the first time you try cg you look at your results and you be like hey this doesn't look great why because curl training has not happened and also because you still have a lot of residual silicone on your hair and so if your hair looks dull if your hair doesn't look great if your curls are only lasting one or two days and then your hair becomes weird that is totally expected in the beginning when you start however your curls have memory and the more you style your hair and the more time you're on cg you'll notice that your hair will last longer your results will look much better essentially it takes a bit of time for your hair to look better which is exactly why we call this a journey so in the beginning i don't want you guys to get super intimidated just chill relax it's going to take time so expect it to take time don't expect cg to completely transform your hair in one wash because that's not how it works if you're taking up cg then you have to be super patient and you have to understand that the main factor here is time so in the beginning when you start cg try your styling routine and don't expect to get things right the first time i promise once you style your hair 3 4 5 times you will notice that you're getting better at it so you started a particular technique of styling so let's say you're trying the rake and scrunch method give the routine a little bit of time give it at least 5 washes and then if you feel like it's not working for you then you can switch to another routine and essentially there are so many things for you to consider i have an entire playlist on curly hair advice that you can check out later on on your journey it's going to take a bit of time and it's going to take a lot of experimentation in the beginning it is in your best interest to slowly ease yourself into it and not to dive headlong into cg and get super intimidated i also have a playlist for beginners on my channel i would say in the beginning don't binge so much content watch content but pace it out so that you gain new concepts slowly slowly and my beginner friendly playlist is a great playlist to start at you will find all of the information that you're looking for and more essentially i have more than 70 videos on my channel just talking about curly hair so i guarantee if you have a question then you will definitely find an answer somewhere on my channel so take your time and have a look So if you enjoyed this video then there's a very good chance that you might enjoy one of these and feel free to go through my channel you will find so much content if you are interested in hair care